Hello, I'm Sarah Moulton, the executive chef of Gourmet Magazine. Welcome to Cooking Live and our show on burgers. As always, I look forward to hearing from you, so please call in or email me, and we'll try to sort out your burger questions. And I think we got a burger for everybody tonight, or almost everybody. We'll certainly talk about a lot of different kinds of burgers. And I think it's really funny that the descendant of Ronald McDonald, well, not Ronald McDonald, of Mr. McDonald, who started McDonald's, was on the news tonight, our news. And so I'm just continuing. Uh, it's because he's also got a, they've got a book out on burgers. There's a couple good books out on burgers. One of them is by Marcel Dessonnier, and he got a lot of chefs to contribute their favorite burger recipe and we had a lot of fun doing the show one of the things that happened when I was we were planning is I got very very hungry because there's so much you can do with burgers and we're gonna do three different varieties tonight we're gonna do a beef burger although a different way uh, we're gonna do a tuna burger and we're also gonna do a lamb burger and it's not just the burger itself it's the seasonings but it's not just the seasonings it's the toppings, it's the extra crunch, it's the salad, it's the dressing, it's the cheese, it's the bread. So you can just take it from A to Z and it doesn't all have to be high fat. Um, although some of the stuff we're doing is more high fat than others, but it can, they're just delicious. And you throw them on the grill and you, you win. Uh, of course, tonight we're stuck with our usual, not stuck, I love my grill pan. I love, love, love my grill pan, but we're going to be cooking on a grill pan so we can show those of you who are not fortunate enough to be in the country with a grill, a real live grill, what you can do on a grill pan. I got to start here because my peppers are ready already. We're making a green chili cheeseburger, which is something that's served throughout the Southwest, um, particularly in New Mexico. And uh, Jane and Michael Stern, who write for Gourmet, this column called Two for the Road, did an article on G green chili cheeseburgers. I mean, rough job, but they had to go and eat at all these different places. Uh, let me just talk about the chilies, and I'll get back to what a green chili cheeseburger is. We've got here an Anaheim and a Poblano, and we've been roasting them, which this is one of the many ways you can char them, in a hot... Um, this is just a regular cast iron skillet. You could do them in a grill pan too, but they get more easily charred. And you really want them to be blackened on all sides. And then once you get them to this point, which we just about gotten them, we've missed a few little spots there, but I'm not going to worry about it. You take them right off and put them into a bowl with plastic on top. You could peel and char any pepper this way in just a dry skillet. You can also do it under a broiler. I find that a broiler tends to cook the chilies. And you don't want to cook them so much as just char them and peel the skin off. The purpose of this is to give them a smoky, two things, is to get the skin off, but to give them a smoky, smoky taste. And the reason we put them in this bowl with the plastic on top is then they steam a little bit because they're a little bit hot and the skin separates even more from the pepper so it's much easier to peel. But now that I've taken that out, let me show you what they look like when they're not blackened. We've got, here's our poblano. And this has a little bit of heat. This is the favorite pepper for stuffing. And, but it's like the jalapeno, it can vary in terms of its heat. So, you know, just be prepared for a very little bit to a little bit of a hit. And the Anaheim is rather mild also, but these are the two traditional ones that are used, so we're going to do a mix tonight. Anyway, what is a green chili cheeseburger? Well, there's many different variations of the Southwest, as Michael and Jane Stern found out. But basically, it consists of a burger with a mixture of roasted, peeled, chopped peppers with some heat on, to them on top. And the cheese is melted either over or under the peppers. And they came up with a recipe that we're going to do tonight that um, also has some garlic and onions in it with the peppers. And we're going to do the whole nine yards. And it's really a great, great burger. But we're going to start with our meat. I'm sort of starting backwards because I wanted to get my peppers off before they cooked more than they charred. Um, there you have four choices for ground beef that you generally find in the supermarket. You have sirloin, which is the most lean. Um, it's like only 15% fat. You know, when you see something that says 90% lean, that very likely might be sirloin. But then after sirloin comes round, which is the next leanest, then comes ground chuck, which would always be my choice, by the way. Uh, and that can, but that can have between 23 and 30% fat. And then last but not least, you have something that's known as ground meat or hamburger. And that could be a combination of almost anything in there. Probably be very flavorful, but also would be very fatty and can lose as much as a third of its volume in cooking because all the fat comes, up, comes out, which isn't the end of the world if you're planning on making something where you drain off the fat. But in general, keep in mind that fat contributes flavor. So if you, take, you reach for one of those lean packages, you're probably going to end up with something that's rather dry and it might need some help. Now, how can you help a dry burger? You can add sautéed onions, some other sort of vegetable, like some carrots. You could add some sauteed mushrooms. You could add a little bit of vegetable juice, like some tomato juice. Um, 
All of those things would help it to be less dry. Or quite simply, you could add a little bit of oil, but that sort of defeats the purpose. So my choice always is chuck because it's got the best percentage of fat to lean. It's not the least uh, caloric. So you can try those other alternatives if you want to go with sirloin or round. What we're going to work with tonight is sirloin. And we're going to flavor it. I've got one and a half pounds of that in here. Um, did I just say sirloin? We actually do have sirloin because um, we are doing a leaner version, but I, I myself would do chuck, okay? And then we're going to add some salt and pepper. And you can, you can just add the salt and pepper on the outside, but it's nice to add a little bit on the inside. It's important, however, to season the burger right before you put it in the pan because you don't want it to sweat because the salt pulls out liquid. And then we've got some southwestern seasonings, the things you associate with it. Half a teaspoon of ground Cuban, half a teaspoon of paprika, actually and a little bit, a quarter teaspoon of chili powder. And then, with my impeccably clean hands, I'm going to mix this. And let me just say a couple tips about ground meat, regardless of what it is. It is the most perishable of all proteins that you will deal with when it's ground up. Anything ground up is much more dangerous because there's so much more of a surface area that can, um, you know, grow bacteria. So you have to work with it quickly, buy it, use it the same day or at least the next day, if you have to freeze it, shape it into patties, which is a good little trick. And, um, you know, gently don't work it too much or you'll end up, end up with a very dense burger. Shape them, you know, press them the size you want and freeze them in patty sizes in a double um, plastic wrap with some foil on the outside. And they defrost faster that way. But you want to not work with it too much. I'm almost already working with it too much. And it's a good idea to make them ahead and chill them after you've worked them. Just you want everything to be not too warm because this is a dangerous atmosphere. So I'm going to start shaping these into uh, some burgers. And the other thing is if you are going to freeze them, you should defrost them in the refrigerator. You should really defrost everything in the refrigerator. Don't defrost anything on the counter. Should we make big ones? or We'll make a big one. What the heck? Um, you can stretch them with all the things I just said so you don't have to serve everybody such a big burger. I mean, this is a good size. I'd say this is about Ooh, seven ounces. Eight ounces is rather large. Yeah, this is probably about six, seven ounces. You don't need to have an eight-ounce burger. You should try to make up the difference, especially if you're using chuck, which is higher in fat, with some toppings or other things that are less fattening. Okay, when we come back, I'm going to continue making my chili cheeseburgers, so don't go away. Sponsored by Hefty One Zip. There's the hard way or the hefty way. Hefty One Zip. What's the easiest way to close an ordinary storage bag? Put it in a Hefty One Zip. That's the amazing One Zip slider. It's the easiest to close. And only Hefty's got it. Locks into place the first time, so you're sure they're closed every time. Organizes your refrigerator in no time. So, what's the easiest way to close an ordinary bag? Put it in a Hefty One Zip. There's the hard way or the hefty way. Hefty One Zip. When Nina and Alan go out for dinner, it's all work and no play. We get kitchen detail. Their job is to track down great chefs. They're always so inspiring. Speak to clientele. You'll get to know the menu. And of course, sample the goods. It's too much fun. So if you're into classic Franks or the finest American fare, we can't pass it up. Join Nina Griscom and Alan Richmond for the very latest on Dining Around, tonight at 8.30 Eastern on the TV Food Network. Joneses drool. Taste what's next. Pork, the other white meat. My kids, I love them, but sometimes they don't see the messes they make, so they'd never see bacteria here. Even after washing, this counter can be teeming with germs. I see them because I'm a Dow scientist. It's why we created new Dow antibacterial cleaner. It removes grease and kills germs for a microscopic clean, unlike ordinary cleaners. They don't miss a crumb. New Dow Antibacterial Cleaner. With Dow, it's not just clean, it's microscopically clean. Well, hey, good looking. What you got cooking? If 
pure charcoal has been letting you down, get fast starting Kingsford. Kingsford Charcoal, the sure fire. Pressure for a new recipe can be brutal in your small, high-performance kitchen. To protect yourself, you need the essence, Bam! the essence of Emerald. Weekdays at 3.30 Eastern. Welcome back. I'm Sarah Moulton, and for those of you who are just tuning in, you're watching Cooking Live, and tonight's topic is burgers. I'm here to help answer your questions, so feel free to call or email me. We're starting with the traditional beef burger. I've got them on my grill. I like them rare to medium rare. The uh, government would not approve. The party line is you should cook it well done. And there's a reason for that. Um, there's a danger of, you know, bacteria. So if you want to be careful, uh, cook it well done. If you want to live dangerously, um, you can do what I do. But understand the government does not approve. So I've got those cooking. I'm making my green chili topping here. Um, while my onions are cooking, and this is um, the, like a quarter cup of chopped onion, and a couple tablespoons of oil, I'm going to peel my peppers. And for this recipe, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not precise. But you're supposed to use four An Anaheim chilies. Those are these long guys. And one poblano. And see what happens after it's been under the plastic for a while is it's really quite easy. Some peppers are easier than other. You, to just take off the peel, you can either use your hands. Of course, you end up with exquisite little bits of skin underneath your nails, which you have to explain away later on. Or you can just take your knife and very gently sort of scrape it once you get started. There's always a few little stubborn bits that need a knife. The one thing you must not, must not, must not do is run these underwater to get the um, skin off. Because what happens is then you take off all the sort of natural, wonderful flavor that you've developed here. It's like you're just washing all the sort of juices off. Let me give my um, burgers a turn. Oops, and my onions are getting some color on them, which I didn't mean to do, but it's not the end of the world. It's fine. I just wanted to soften them. Uh, you'll see I salted this just before I put it in. See the wonderful grill marks you get on this. Now, if your meat, now I didn't put any oil in here. We are using sirloin, which is rather lean. Um, if your pan's well seasoned, no problem. But you might also want to add a little bit of oil if you're using a leaner meat. Like a chuck, you wouldn't have any problem at all. Okay, I'm going to add some garlic. This is a garlic clove minced in here. And this is going to just cook for a second. I've got it on off burner while I finish chopping up a little bit of pepper over there. And this is the green chili topping. Now, if you wanted to, you could just quite simply take your chopped green chilies and not make this topping uh, just straight up as they are and put them on top of your burger. And that would be perfectly delicious. But this is an actual sort of recipe that uh, Jane and Michael came up with that, you know, you could use, you know, you could keep and use, um, you know, for a couple of days. Okay. I'm just going to, where the heat is in a chili, there's a little, Lots of discussion that it's in the seeds. It's not in the seeds. I learned this from Rick Bayless. It's in the seed pod, this thing right here, and in the ribs of the, this, the, ribs of the pepper. Not that there's that much heat in this pepper anyway. So I'm going to just chop this up, this little bit. I mean, I do the whole thing, but we've already got quite a bit chopped up, so I'm just going to finish doing this part. Oops. The garbage pail is always somewhere different every night. Okay, I've got a call from Farhan. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I was just wondering, does it, um, like, does it depend, like, when you, when you cook on a gas or an electric stove, um, is it better, um, is the flavor better if you cook on a gas rather than an electric, or is it, does it, re it doesn't really matter? Well, it's not the flavor, it's controlling the heat. Um, is, you're talking about a stove, not a grill, right? Right. Yeah. It's not the flavor, it's the heat. Most of us in the business prefer gas because... You can get it really hot really fast, and you can also turn it off immediately. The trouble with electric is it slows up, it, it heats up slowly, and when you turn it off, it's still hot. You know, it takes a while to cool down. Mm -hmm. So it's much harder to control the heat. However, I will say this. For some reason in my life right now, I cook in about five different places. Every single place I have to cook on electric. And I've gotten used to it. It's not the end of the world. What I do is I work with two burners, and I have one on low or one on off if I need to get the pan off immediately. And I just, instead of expecting that one burner to go from very high to very low in 10 seconds, like a gas burner would, I just work with two. But, I mean, it's a good question. If you, most people, everybody in the business would say they prefer gas. But, you know, it's not what all of us, I'm not zoned in any of the places I work or where I live to have gas, so I, I work with electric. You know, you work with what you have. Okay, they added a little, this is very interesting. 
this is, as I said, what they, Jane and Michael Stern came up with after a lot of research, you know, rough job in Santa Fe eating chili cheeseburger after chili cheeseburger. They came up with this concoction, which uh, seems like a very good, solid way to do it. You wouldn't have browned your onions the way I did, but it's not the end of the world. That's a teaspoon and a half of flour, and then they add a little bit of water to it. And this makes sort of a, you know, a little bit of a thickened mixture, which means that instead of the chilies falling all over the burger, um, they actually sort of stick on top. There we go. Okay. And then you bring this up to a boil, which is going to make it thicken almost immediately. Starch won't thicken until it comes to a boil. Use a whisk. So right now, this is just sort of a floury mixture. Now, it's a teaspoon and a half of flour, which isn't a whole heck of a lot, so I'm not too worried about cooking out the starch, but generally you want to cook, for each tablespoon of flour you have, you want to cook it at least a minute. And we've only got a teaspoon and a half, which isn't a tablespoon. So then your chilies go in, and you've got to make sure you add your salt and pepper. Okay. Boy, this looks good. I got so hungry just looking over the show tonight. All three of these burgers are really great. All right. So now, now we're going to do this. You can do this one of two ways. I didn't season yet. Very, very, very important. Here's my salt and pepper. You could either put the green chili mixture underneath the cheese, or you could put it on top of the cheese. Now, for visual effect, we're going to put it on top of the cheese. Okay, we've got Bill on the phone. Hey, Bill. Hi, how you doing? Fine. I love the show. Thanks. Um, just I'm uh, wondering, do you ever add eggs or bread to your, to your burgers and find them like when you make turkey burgers or chicken burgers? Well, it's more appropriate in them because they need help. You okay. know, the, in terms of the eggs, they also need, the yolk provides some fat and uh -huh. some moisture. Um, and the breadcrumbs provide some binding. So, sure. I wouldn't do it to beef, though. You just don't need it. Okay, but chicken and turkey, you would do it. Absolutely, yeah. Thank Again, you, very much. you have a double whammy with chicken and turkey, and I'm glad you asked because we're not doing chicken and turkey tonight. You've got to make sure that you cook them well done, and this I really believe in because of the salmonella. And if you add the egg, you also have to make sure you cook them well done. So that's just one caveat. Ooh, oh, that's good. Hmm. Okay, let's see how my burgers are doing. You don't want to squish them too much because all the juice comes out. The last thing you should do, which a lot of people do, is take your... your spatula when they're on the grill and go, I just can't do it. All the juices would come charging out. Don't do that. Okay, we got some extra sharp cheddar cheese that we're going to put on and melt very quickly. It takes 10 seconds because we've very thinly sliced it. You can use one of those thin slices. You could use other cheeses too, but this is the classic. We're doing the classic, and so we might as well stick with all the right tools. And then to let it melt, you just put the lid on. As I said, I'm doing my burgers rare. You can do yours a little more well done, and the thing to do is to get them seared and then turn the heat down and let them finish cooking that way. Now, just get wild, we decided to use a sesame seed bun just for you. So while that cheese is melting, I'm going to take an email, then we're going to put this whole thing together. Let's see what we've got over here. Okay, we've got a question from Bob. How can I tell when a third pound burger is finished without cutting it open to look and the pinkness. We like ours about medium or so. Okay, this is something I didn't get to finish the other night. We were talking about how do you know when meat is done. And burgers basically work the same way unless you've got a really thick crust on them, in which case it's hard to feel. Let me just see where I'm at. Oh, good, I got one more second. What you do is you take your hand and you shake it. I'm sure you've seen other chefs on this show do it. I mean on TVFN. Okay, so what you're, what you're dealing with is this area between your first finger and your thumb. Feel there. See, I told you I have all this pepper stuff under my nail. Feel there. That's what rare feels like. Stretch your hand apart and feel again. That's what medium rare to medium feels like. And then, if you want to know what well done feels like, and I think it's true for most noses, that's what it feels like, really firm. So that's what you're looking for. You need to touch it. And when I just touched my burger, I should have shown you more carefully a minute ago, I could tell that it was still had a fair amount of give, which means that it was... Um, I'm just going to put my lid down here, uh, which means that it was medium, rare to medium rare. Okay, here we go. I'm so excited. After this, you could put, you know, oh, uh, tomato, lettuce, you know, the whole nine yards. We're, we're being very pure, so we're just doing it with our straight uh, ch uh, cheese and uh, chilies. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now, you could see why they bound this a little bit with a little bit of flour, because instead of just falling on the plate, it sort of just stays there right on top. 
Okay, next up is a Mediterranean lamb burger. So stick with me. I never thought it could be this simple. I can't even program a VCR, and I'm online. America Online is the easiest internet online service. You don't have to learn a lot of computer jargon. It's like actual plain English. America Online. Simple to install, friendly menus, easy to use. And we've been working night and day to increase capacity 75%, adding 150,000 new modems. It's so easy my dad can use it. America Online. So easy to use. No wonder it's number one. Hey, look at us bargain bleaches. We snuck into the Clorox bleach factory. Who'd guess we're bargain bleaches? Because bleach is bleach, right? I, 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 I don't know. I just hope Clorox doesn't put us to the metal test. The metal test? No! Don't be fooled by bargain bleaches. Look at the difference when you pour Clorox bleach and the leading bargain bleach through a filter. They leave sediment, metals, and iron. I thought iron was good for you. Oh, shut up. Ow. There's only one Clorox bleach. One of the hottest new places to eat doesn't take reservations. But with meals like this, it's always a full house. Taste what's next. Pork, the other white meat. What's the easiest way to close an ordinary storage bag? Put it in a hefty one zip. That's the amazing one zip slider. It's the easiest to close. And only hefty's got it. Locks into place the first time, so you're sure they're closed every time. Organizes your refrigerator in no time. So, what's the easiest way to close an ordinary bag? Put it in a hefty one zip. There's the hard way. Or the hefty way. Hefty one zip. They're coming, one after the other. The biggest season of box office hits ever. Get four times the choice every time you tune in. Three channels of HBO and Cinemax. Get all four channels for just $14.95 per month for six months. Plus, get special savings on installation and Mahalo Air. Purchase a Mahalo Air round-trip ticket and your companion flies free. Call 625-8100. Offer limited to new HBO subscribers. Bob's. Experience Hawaii's best pizza and a whole lot more. Very exciting, very inviting, and very, very good. Pizza Bob's. Pizza Bob's. Open daily from 11 a.m. back and I'm Sarah Moulton. Tonight we're covering burgers on Cooking Live. Please call in or send me some email if you have any questions. Alrighty, we're moving into the Mediterranean area here with some lamb burgers. I just happen to love lamb, so that's why we're doing it. But this is the deluxe burger. You know when they say deluxe and they mean lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise? This is way beyond that. Well, first we're going to make a f nice flavorful burger. Then we're going to make a yogurt sauce to go on it. Well, actually, before we make the yogurt sauce, we're going to make a sort of a tomato salad to go on it. Then we're going to do a yogurt sauce. Then we're going to throw some goat cheese in, and it's going to be served in pita. So those are all those elements I was talking about before. You can play around with all those parts. Instead of just having a delicious burger, you can have everything going on. So we're going to start with, I was just pitting a few olives. We'll get back to that in a minute. One and a half pounds of fresh ground lamb from the shoulder. Um, and the shoulder has a really nice um, mix of lean to fat, so it's going to be nice and moist. It's a good cut to use. And we're going to add our flavorings, which is one garlic clove. By the way, if you can get the butcher to, if you have a butcher, a lot of us don't, we're all dealing with supermarkets, but if you can get your one tablespoon of minced fresh rosemary and parsley and some salt and pepper, I'm going to stir it up. But if you can get your butcher to grind it for you, go in there, get a really fresh, beautiful piece of meat, tell them what you want, get them to grind it for you, get them to grind it sort of coarse, you'll end up with a more moist product than if it's really fine because it tends to lose less juice. Then you're really in good shape. Take it right home, season it, cook it up, and you're in business. 
One of the things I haven't talked about tonight, because I know that I'm going to add salt on the outside, is if you really want it to be well seasoned with whatever you're adding it to it, whether it just be salt and pepper or whether you're going to add, like we did last time, some cumin and paprika, you might want to make what I refer to as a spicy meatball or a pilot, meaning you take a little tiny hamburger, you make a little tiny hamburger, cook it up, taste it, see if you like it. You might say, oh gee, I do that all the time at Gourmet when we're making lunches. I want to make sure the seasoning is right. And you obviously, with very few exceptions, you don't want to stick raw meat in your mouth. So, now you want to mix it very sparingly. And then we're going to shape it into burgers the same way as we were talking about before. And, you know, don't play around with it too much because then it gets too firm and then it comes out too dense and sort of heavy. You want it to be sort of light in there. And work quickly and make sure that everything is cold. Okay, we get a call from Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good. Good. I have a question um, regarding turkey burgers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, turkey burgers, the ground burger, doesn't taste like Much. Um, ground round. Right. And... I usually put Worcestershire sauce, onions, seasoned salt, and pepper. Is there anything else I can add to give a good flavor? You want it to taste like a beef burger is what you're saying? I want it to taste like a good turkey burger for my family to enjoy. Well, do you find that it's is it the flavor you're having a hard time with or their texture? Is it dry? Actually, it's the flavor. It's the flavor. Well, you might want to add some garlic. Do you like garlic? Oh, yes, yes. Garlic would help a lot. I would also add some cooked onions. I just think they give it a nice sort of depth of flavor and sweetness. Okay. You could add some fresh herbs to it, too, which you haven't done. Um, right. Oh, it doesn't sound like you have. You no, I haven't. It. No. You add some fresh herbs. Um, let me see. For turkey, you could use thyme. You could use sage. Um, you could use chives. You could use parsley. That would all help it. But the other thing that I think would really help, too, is, uh, you know how I was, let me just rinse off my hands. Okay. I was just talking about how it's important, especially with something like a turkey burger, to make that little test pilot, to make that little sample spicy meatball, because that way you can taste it and say, you know, this is bland. And nine times out of ten, it might need a little salt and pepper. Or maybe you could add a little lemon juice and that would perk it up. Or maybe it needs a little more garlic or a little more onion, but there's no way you're going to know unless you cook up a little sample. So I would advise that you do that, too. Um, I think turkey and chicken really benefit from vegetables being added to them because vegetables add a moistness as well. So another thing you can do is add some grated carrots or even some chopped tomato. So that might help, too. Okay, so we're making our little salad to go with this. And uh, we've got our tomato. That's a, uh, we got about two seeded and chopped ripe tomatoes. Depending on what kind of time of year it is, you might use the big bee steak or you might use the little plums because they've got such a wonderful texture. And then we've got, oh, let me show you because I haven't done it in a while, how to uh, pit a Kalamata olive. Uh, these are Greek olives. They are pretty available. Oh, these are already pitted. I don't want to show you that. Uh, they're pretty available in the supermarket. They've got a really wonderful flavor. Um, and they're the ones that I would recommend. But this would work for pitting any olive. It's a little harder with the tiny uh, niçoise olives because they've got such a big pit. But you just take the side of your knife, not, not the sharp side, the, the blunt side, and whack it like that, and you'll find the pit comes right out, and you don't end up with all that stuff on your hands. And then these just get chopped up and added. And so it's a third of a cup by the time we've, we're done of chopped Kalamata olives, our two seeded chopped ripe tomatoes. You could use cherry tomatoes would be great for this too, especially the ones you can find in the supermarket on the vine these days. What I do is just cut them in half, squeeze out the seeds, and then chop them a little bit and throw them in. And we've got some fresh herbs, three tablespoons of minced parsley, uh, two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. You could use any vinegar that makes you happy. Of course, we need our salt and pepper, and then a little bit of olive oil, about two tablespoons. And that's going to be our salad. So we have, as I said, this is our deluxe, deluxe burger. No plain old lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise for us. We're going to go much further than that. Let's get my fork together here. Add my oil. Use extra virgin olive oil because this is our Mediterranean burger. We want to make sure we use the Mediterranean ingredients. You could actually leave the oil out. That would be completely acceptable. It just adds another flavor. Okay. And I'm going to season my burgers right before I put them in the pan, but they need their seasoning. They'll have a much better flavor. If you can't use salt, obviously don't add salt. You could use one of the ma many um, seasoning mi mixes that are in the supermarket. That might be a good idea for my friend with the tasteless turkey burger to get some of the southwestern mixes, the ones without salt that have a lot of flavor. Okay, we're going to cook these up, and when we come back, we're going to put together all the other parts of this burger. So we'll see you in a minute. There are 
lot of reasons to enjoy YoPlay. Now there's one more. YoPlay's Lost World Jurassic Park Flip and Win Sweepstakes with over five million prizes. I won! It'll make a big impression. Hey, look at us bargain bleaches. We snuck into the Clorox bleach factory. Who'd guess we're bargain bleaches? Because bleach is bleach, right? I, 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 I don't know. I just hope Clorox doesn't put us to the metal test. The metal test? No! Don't be fooled by bargain bleaches. Look at the difference when you pour Clorox bleach and leading bargain bleach through a filter. They leave sediment, metals, and iron. I thought iron was good for you. Don't shut up! Ow! There's only one Clorox bleach. Great news. When it comes to yeast infection treatments, Femstat 3 is the only leading brand with a three-day cream. Its unique cream is thick to help the medicine stay and treat where you need it most. Femstat 3 cream, a better way to cure. May you next enjoy the other white meat. Presenting a rack of pork. Skewered pork kebabs and America's cut pork chops. Bring the royal taster. Bring my cat. Bring my cat. Pork. The other white meat. Taste what's next. At most furniture stores, you have to dance to their tune. But at Expressions Custom Furniture, we set your imagination free. With over 90,000 frame and fabric choices, you're sure to find a look that hits you. Come on in and take advantage of Great Expressions choices at Great Expressions sale prices. Expressions. You'll find yourself in our furniture. Welcome to Pearl City High School, proud home of the Chargers. I'm Allison Tyro. This year, we're proud of our four class advisors. Aside from their regular duties, they're also involved as facilitators for student and teacher groups, coaches, and advisors for clubs and committees. I've worked in a lot of different areas in law, but nothing gives me more satisfaction than working with the students of Pearl City High School. I encourage all adults to get involved in the education of Hawaii Zoo. School Spirit Personal Pride was brought to you by the OIA and Oceanics MyTV. We're back on Cooking Live. I'm Sarah Moulton, and burgers are, the, are on the menu tonight. If you have any questions, just call or email me. We're now making our Mediterranean lamb burger, and we got our burger cooked. It's over here. Again, I'd eat it medium rare. The government would tell you to eat it well done. You decide what you want to do. Um, in general, though, when, when the government tells you stuff like that, at least very young children, um, very old people, well, old people who are having, you know, health problems and people who are immune impaired should be very careful about what you eat so you definitely should eat it well done um, okay so we're gonna make our yogurt sauce and what we've done is taken a 12 ounce container of yogurt and let it uh, drain I use just a dampened paper towel you can use cheesecloth if you have it but I wet the paper towel before I put the yogurt in there and then what happens is it gives off a ton of juice we're just trying to concentrate and make it less watery and then we're gonna add some flavorings to it um, uh, some minced garlic and I'm going to add some fresh mint. Mint and lamb is a match made in heaven, but there's lots of matches with, with lamb, but mint's one of them for sure. So let me show you. I'm going to chiffonade up some mint here, and that's going to go in also a little salt and pepper. So the old <laughs> chiffonade routine. Chiffonade just means shredding. You put a lot of, uh, get your bigger leaves, wash them dry, then spin them dry, make sure they're nicely dry. Stack them up like a deck of cards, roll them up like a cigar, and then just cross-cut shred them. And your friends will think you're a genius because they get it so fine. Okay, we've got a call from Bev. Hey, Bev. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. I was wondering, we love to make homemade burgers and then freeze them, um, but sometimes we don't always remember to defrost them in time for the barbecue. Is it okay to cook them from frozen? No. I mean, I think unless they are absolutely paper, paper, paper thin. I mean, like really thin, like a la McDonald's. Okay. You're going to end up with a burger that's cooked on the outside and icy cold on the inside, which is not very pleasant. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We also, we do, you, do, you really do want to be careful with your sanitation with the ground meat, particularly like me, if you want to eat it rare or medium rare. You've got to be so careful that you do everything right up to the point of cooking it. All right. Mixing this up. You can see this is stiff. You're, it's stiff for yogurt, and that's because it's drained. We got rid of the excess liquid. So there's our sauce. 
And we've got a little bit as if that wasn't exciting enough. We've got some crumbled goat cheese here and some pitas. And what I did is I just took the top part. You could actually just, you know, open it up if you want or just take the top off like I did, which seemed an easy way to go. But you need a fair amount of pita to hold all the stuff we're going to put in here. So here we go. So in goes our burger. Of course, it would be very hot, so you wouldn't just pick it up like that. It'd be right off the grill. And then let's put some of our sauce. And let's put some cr crumbled cheese in next. You could leave the, the cheese out especially. Uh, meanwhile, the, you can see the burger sort of disappeared, but that's because we're building the whole sandwich here. Um, you could leave out the goat cheese if you're not a goat cheese fan, but it adds a wonderful tang. So you get sort of the double whammy from the um, yogurt and from the goat cheese. Let me see. I think I'll put my yogurt in next. Just spread it around. Actually, you could spread the pita with it first. You could do this any which way. As a matter of fact, it would be fun to have a burger party and have all your ingredients right out there, you know, all your condiments, all your extras right there on the counter. And that way, there you go, there's your salad. Um, and that way people, whoops, and you won't get it all over the table. People can just help themselves. And, uh, you know, they can add the salad. They could add some shredded lettuce. They could do whatever they want. You know, a pita party. Why not a pita party? A burger party. Okay, we come back. We're going to do, finally, we're going to get to something really nice and, and low fat, a tuna burger. So stay tuned. Boys of summer are back. City style, country style. And they're smoking. Slow, slow smoking. New York City's Bobby Flay and good old boy Jack McDavid are fired up. We want big bowl flavor. We don't play around. And sharing the techniques of southwestern and country cooking. It's good and red. So is your neck. Enjoy some of summer's hottest fare on grilling and chilling. Weeknights at 1030 Eastern on the TV Food Network. <laughs> like finding things? Then find eight of the Pop-Tarts you love in the eight-pack from Kellogg's. Eight warm, fruit-filled Pop-Tarts, where most other toaster pastries only have six. The Kellogg's Pop-Tarts eight-pack. Isn't it great finding things? Double the treat with one single gram of fat. Chocolate from you, a dream come true. Creamy, low-fat yogurt, chocolate topping. So you savor flavors like chocolate cheesecake, rich and swirling, or chocolate-covered strawberries, hand-dipped. Dan and here's a side of you, I love. Dan and Double Delights. Taste why it's Dan I have the cleanest and the nicest smelling bathroom in the neighborhood. Since I put Vanish Hangings in, I actually haven't gone back to clean it. I haven't seen any stains. The dispenser is the key item. It's easy to maintain. That's what it is. It's easy to maintain. Drop the tablet into the dispenser, hang it on your tank, and just flush. The Vanish Hangings repels the stains. There's no ring. Vanish Hangings stain repel. Stop stains before they start. S.C. Johnson Wax. It's still working. If anybody doesn't believe me, ring my doorbell and you can smell my toilet. Joneses drool. Taste what's next. Pork, the other white meat. Last year, Americans spent over two and a half billion dollars on products for their backs. Here's a nice item. <laughs> Why is this market so large? It could be that some people aren't sleeping on the right mattress. We'd recommend a Sealy Posturepedic Sleep System. Its patented coils give your back the correct support it needs. Posturepedic support, only from Sealy. I'm not comfortable with this.
Welcome back to Cooking Live. I'm Sarah Moulton, and if you've got any questions about burgers, there's still time to reach me. You can either call or email me. And we're not just talking about the beef variety. We're talking about them all. I wish we had more time so we could do more, but, you know, we'll do that another time. Okay, we're making a tuna burger, and it's very, very important here to get to know your fishmonger, to get the freshest, best tuna you possibly can. For this recipe, we're using two pounds of yellowfin. We've got a beautiful big chunk here and some smaller scraps. And the main thing you're looking for... Um, is a piece without too much sinew, but where you have it, as you can see it right here, we were starting to pull it apart, because this can be rather tough when you go to chop it up. Of course, if you chopped it really fine, you wouldn't notice, but we're trying to chop it a little coarser because the tuna will be much more moist when you go to cook it. But what you can do is you can either just sort of pull it with your hands. It helps if the tuna is very, very well chilled, or you can see literally, this is more wasteful if you don't want to take your time, you can see literally where the sinew is, and you can just cut it out, and it doesn't run all the way through. You can just sort of pull it off. So that if you're, if you're going to be wasteful, you can cut it out in the parts where it is, or um, you can just go through very slowly and take it out. But you can see, like, for example, right here, let me show you. I hope we've got... Here you can see where the sinew is running through. Here you see nothing. So we know that we're not going to have any problems over there. But you want to remove it and chop it rather coarsely. We did... Um, I'm very bad about measurements. I'd say a quarter inch dice. And so... And make sure it's nice and cold. It's so much easier to work with when it's cold. As a matter of fact, any time you're going to chop up a protein, the colder it is, the easier it is. Or even if you're going to bone out a chicken, the colder it is, the easier it is to work with, because it softens up as it gets warm. And work quickly. Um, this is, you know, dangerous again. We're chopping up, um, creating more of a surface area for bacteria to grow whenever you chop something up. I'm just going to do a little bit, because we've already got most of it done. Isn't that beautiful? And the main thing, and this is so important, because we ordered today at Gourmet some tuna steaks for a special party that we were doing tonight. And we ordered from a very, very reputable place. This is even a little larger than we did over there. But I'll add it in anyway. Um, and we got the steaks, and they smelled. Fish should not smell. If it does, it's not fresh. So needless to say, we called them up, said we weren't going to use it, got it from somewhere else. They swore they got it in today. But just, it should not smell. It just shouldn't. It should, and this does not smell. It smell it's, you know, there's no odor here. Because if it does, that means it's old. Okay, three tablespoons of chopped scallion. We're adding our flavorings. You notice we flavored every single burger. You don't have to, but it adds another element to it. Two tablespoons of ginger root, and these are all in the Asian variety of flavorings, um, except for here we're adding some mustard, um, which is nice. Two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a pinch of cayenne. And this was for two pounds of the yellow fin tuna fillets. You could add more cayenne if you're sort of in a dangerous mood some salt and pepper. Again, you could make your spicy meatball if you want to, or you could just make sure that you season the outside of the burger, and that way you get a uh, salt hit on the outside. And very gently mix the whole thing up. And then form it into patties and chill it for about 30 minutes. Now these I'm going to cook till rare, uh, because it tends to get very, this is a lean, lean fish, it tends to get dried out. It's just like when you have a tuna steak. Um, the USDA, the government would say, don't do that either, but, um, you know, you can live dangerously if you want. All right, we've got a call from Margarita. Hi, Margarita. Hi, I love your show. Thank you. I have a question. It's, my friend used to make burgers, mm -hmm. and she used to put feta cheese in the middle. Yes. And it wouldn't ooze out. But sometimes I like to use Monterey Jack or Swiss. Yeah. But my portions, I don't know, maybe I'm not doing right. They ooze out, and I wanted to get to the table, and there's no cheese inside. Right. What a, what a frustrating uh, thing. I think it's just you need to make your burgers a little bigger, because they've really got to surround that cheese, because um, it's, it's a very, very melty kind of cheese. The other thing you could do is maybe coat it in something like breadcrumbs and then put it in the burger, but I don't think that's going to help all that much. I've got an idea. Also, you could chill your, your cheeses. Make sure your cheese is really cold, okay? Get a piece, you know, a, a wedge. Don't have it be grated. Get a wedge. Make sure it's really, really cold. Maybe even throw it in the freezer for a little while before you put it in the center of your burger and make sure it's just really, really well covered by the burger. And I think you'll have better success. I remember in the old days when we used to make Velveeta burgers. And the Velveeta, for some reason, just stayed in there. But we would just really coat it up well. Okay, I'm seasoning my... Um, that is a yummy thing to do, though, put cheese in the middle of the burger, I have to say. Okay, we're going to cook these very quickly. And while those are cooking, 
I'm going to make my other parts. Remember I said this is another deluxe burger. This isn't just the burger that's been seasoned. This is the burger with extras. So I've got here some shredded cucumber, one sliced cucumber, not shredded, sliced, and um, some red onion that you could soak in water ahead of time if you want to. Two tablespoons of chopped pickled ginger, which you can find in a lot of Asian stores. If not, you could certainly use fresh ginger, but this has a nice pickled taste. Fresh ginger would be great and we're adding some seasoned rice vinegar anyway. Here's, here's what the bottle looks like on the seasoned. Seasoned rice vinegar has a sweetness to it. Regular rice, rice, rice vinegar, listen to me, I can't talk, does not have, let me just check on these guys because they're really going to go in, in and out pretty fast. Oops, yeah, this pan is a little, oops, hot. So I'm just going to move it over here for a sec to get it off. This is, this is what I was saying about an electric pan. You want to make sure that, I mean electric stove, that you work with your different burners because this really got rather dark on the other side. There we go. But remember what you say? You say this is how it was supposed to be. You know, this is the charred tuna burger. This isn't just the tuna burger. This is the charred tuna burger. Okay, so here's our pickled salad. And this adds a great crunch, really important. And a little bit of sugar, which um, I've, I probably have misplaced, but about a tablespoon of sugar. And that gives you a sweet and sour sort of element, which is always nice. So you have your vinegar, and your sugar counterbalancing each other. And then, as if we weren't happy already, we're going to make a wasabi mayonnaise. Now, wasabi comes, you can find it either in the tube. Let me just put this back on to finish the other side. You can find it either in the tube or in a can. And this is more of a paste. If you should end up with the can, which is what most of us end up with, you're going to find that it's very powdery. Now, this is a lot of wasabi. Wasabi is a green horseradish that has a very, very sharp taste. It's what you eat with sushi. And it's, it's, it's just, I love it. It's incendiary. But we're going to make a paste first because this is probably what you'll find. If you get this, you could add just this little bit of it to your mayonnaise. There we go. We're going to add a li very little bit of this. This is what they make into a mountain next to your sushi. You probably are recognizing it. And I might thin it out just a little more. I'm going to stay away from it, too. I don't want to inhale it. So it's soft enough. I'm going to thin it down a little more to add to our mayonnaise. That's really pretty soft. Okay, now... We're going to take some mayonnaise, about a half a cup. This could be the low-fat variety. You could leave the mayonnaise out altogether. You could also use yogurt here if you want to keep this all very low-fat. And a little bit of lime juice, one tablespoon. And then our wasabi. And then you let it sit to develop its flavor. I'm going to take a little taste after I've added just a tiny bit of the wasabi. Go slow, especially if you have people who've never had it before because they're going to be shocked when they taste it. Okay, when we come back, we're going to finish our tuna burger, so stick around. Would you like to try some Kellogg's Corn Pops? Thank you. Go ahead, take two. Corn Pops, Corn Pops today. Mmm, <laughs> they're very good. Mm. The problem with a cereal that's made like popcorn, only sweeter. Just one, please is that it disappears like popcorn, only faster. What? And uh, how are things going? Fast. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's pops. Hey, look at us bargain bleaches. We snuck into the Clorox bleach factory. Who'd guess we're bargain bleaches? Because bleach is bleach, right? I, 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 I don't know. I just hope Clorox doesn't put us to the metal test. The metal test? No! Don't be fooled by bargain bleaches. Look at the difference when you pour Clorox bleach and leading bargain bleach through a filter. They leave sediment, metals, and iron. I thought iron was good for you. Oh, shut up! Ow! There's only one Clorox bleach. One of the hottest new places to eat it doesn't take reservations. But with meals like this, it's always a full house. Taste what's next. Pork, the other white meat. Hi, at Gateway, getting the computer you want is simple. Let's say this is your basic computer. You want lots of memory? Sure. Great speakers. Maybe more memory. No problem. A big monitor? Maybe not that big. The new Pentium 2 processor. See, we built your computer exactly how you want it. So, it ends up as individual as you are. 
Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium 2 processor. Call 1-800-GATEWAY. We'll build one for you. Finally, real internet banking. Coming this fall only from Bank of Hawaii. Minding your money. Building your wealth. KSSK and Oceanic Cable invite you and your family to the biggest family movie of the summer, Disney's Hercules. What you folks need is a hero. Yeah. And who are you? I happen to be a hero. Keep listening to KSSK to win your family fun four-pack and qualify to win a one-year membership to 24-hour fitness. Hercules opens nationwide on June 27th, but you can see it first on Wednesday, June 25th with Oceanic Cable and Hawaii's premier station, KSSK. Finally, real internet banking. Coming this fall only from Bank of Hawaii. Minding your money. Building your wealth. We're back with our burgers, and I'm very happy here. They just, they're all delicious, and they've all got many parts, and that's the point. Don't just put a burger on a plate. You know, dress it up. So over here, you can't even see it. It's, it, see it, it's hiding behind all its accoutrement. We've got our Mediterranean lamb burger with a tomato salad, a little bit of goat cheese, and a garlic yogurt sauce. Right here, we have the chili cheeseburger with uh, cheddar cheese underneath and a wonderful ch chili mixture on top. And then over here, we have our tuna burger with our fresh cucumber salad and our wasabi mayonnaise. Okay, and let's take an email. Okay, from Stephanie, if you make a sauce, like the chili sauce, can you mix it in with the meat before cooking it? Brilliant idea. As a matter of fact, Stephanie, that would be great. Back to my friend with the turkey burger that's sort of boring. That would be great to add to her turkey burger. Great suggestion, although I don't think you would need to bind it with flour because the chilies would just add this wonderful uh, moistness to the meat without needing to be bound. They don't need to be bound at all. Okay, we've got a call from Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Fine. Um, I, there was a call earlier about turkey burgers, and when I make them at home, I put liquid smoke in them, and they taste wonderful. Do you know something interesting I just found out that I didn't know because I always sort of frowned on liquid smoke because I thought it wasn't natural? It's actually a natural, it's made in a natural process, so now I have a whole different attitude about it. That's not a bad idea at all. And Thank it you. works, and everybody loves them. And you start with but a, but a very little bit, right? Right, like, just a little bit. A like, little bit goes a long way. Like a couple of drops, or is it more like an eighth of a teaspoon? Um, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, you know, just, uh, just to taste. Just to taste, right. Again, back to the point that you should make a little spicy meatball or, you know, do a test pilot to make sure that you like the seasoning. Um, so, anyway, any rate, I hope you've had gotten some good ideas tonight. We should, obviously, we should... Now we should have. We made some great burgers, but next time we'll do a turkey burger, we'll do a chicken burger, and we'll talk about other possibilities. Buffalo burger. Hey, you know, why not? There's all sorts of po uh, salmon burger I think we did the last time. Now, tomorrow night we're doing our cook-along again, and I hope you join me. Um, it's a vegetarian one, first time, because we've been doing sort of meat and fish. We're doing a layered tortilla lasagna and a black bean salad, and last but not least, we're doing a grilled banana with ice cream and chocolate sauce. It's going to be delicious. So, you know, get yourself organized. We're going to show you the cook-along list, and um, we'll see you tomorrow, okay? Have a wonderful evening. just seen, plus a complete recipe collection from the week's shows, write to this address. Include the name and number of the show, your name and address, and a $3 check for shipping and handling. Or get our recipes at no cost from our website at foodtv.com.